today we're doing that. Here we go. Hey, good to see you here tonight. I'm not sure if my mic is on here yet. Uh, good to go. Uh, good, ha good to have you here for Wednesday night uh, again. Uh, of course, we're one less than a week away from the voting of the nation here. So we're going to go right into prayer time here. I'm going to do an announcements right at the end here. Hopefully, I remember to do that. Uh, those things like that. But we're going to go over to prayer list here if you would. And again, or it's on Facebook or the internet or the church app, we have the prayer wall. Uh, make sure you go there for us daily to read those names. If you want to submit also a prayer request, you can do that also. So, with that, of course, uh, Georgia McGonagall, she's been on there for quite a while here for health issues. Dr. Britt, continue to pray for him, him and Miss Joyce. Debbie Kruger, also. Paul, uh, Pam Baldwin, also recovering from, uh, for no cancer there, recovering, recovering from surgery. Don Butler, for this is Jake uh, Steele's uncle. Uh, continue to pray for his health issues. Kelly Georgia, uh, let's see, Donna Braggs, Chris Bennett, Tom Powell, or is, uh, Bill Powell's here tonight, continue to pray for him, for all the difficulties he has, and once again, also for Miss Nancy, Brother Howard himself, or Lip, as they watch and take care of him, and help him out with his needs there also. Clyde Quillen, uh, continue to pray for him, he's still having treatments, I texted him uh, last week here, he said that his things are going fine, but uh, some difficulties here and there, but continue to pray for Brother uh, Clyde um, Quillen. Carol Heater, also pray for her. Continue recovering from her surgery she's had. Linda Kearns, health issues also. Uh, let's see here, Frankie Greer, this is one of our shut-ins. Uh, I know Bill, Brother Bill Stone visits him and we're doing some Bible studies with him. Uh, continue to pray for Frankie uh, with that. And Brother Fane uh, Penichetti, continue to pray for him. He was still limping a little bit on Sunday. But not only him, but also, I believe, his sister-in-law, uh, uh, Dom's wife, up there in Philadelphia, she just had neck surgery. So continue to pray for her. She got home. I saw pictures on Facebook with that. But continue to pray for the Penichetti family up in Philadelphia. Pray for Pastor Carlo. We'll go ahead and do a salute to him right now. Okay. He had cataract surgery yesterday. So uh, I think he's doing all right. He answered the phone today, so it didn't... Uh, Heard his hand or, or his uh, voice there at all, but he's doing well. I'm sure we're going to hear more about that, or I'll hear more about that uh, with that. Um, of course, again, um, uh, November 3rd, like I said, uh, less than a week away for us voting here. Remember for us, get out and vote if you have not already, for us, those things in there. And again, vote for us scripturally here. And the personality, things like that, with, uh, you know all those things. Pastor Carla has hit that over and over with us here. So, but pray about that. They can go smoothly with the horse, the country itself, the situation up in Philadelphia that you're aware of there with the rioting going on and for that tragic accident uh, uh, situation that happened there. Uh, pray about that. And also I'll give you an update on my wife, Renee. Uh, she had a phone doctor visit, whatever you call it, I believe yesterday. And she, again, had a report put in November 3rd, which is next Tuesday. That's uh, like a six, seven hour procedure. She has to go there early in the morning. I pick her up around three o'clock to make sure things are working with that. She gets shots. She has uh, lab work to take care of. Of course, between now and then, uh, all those different things. And then on November 11th is her first treatment with chemo. And that is from uh, 8.30. I, I drop her off there and she gets done around about three o'clock. So it's an all day adventure forward with that. So continue to pray for her. She has for a great attitude there. And I'm uh, not saying she's looking forward to it, but we're looking forward to get things started forward on that way to get things uh, cleaned out of the system. But continue to pray for her, and we are appreciate for it and thankful. And we have a, such a loving and great church that looks out for its own. And I thank you again from my heart here, my wife. And uh, if you can, just text her for us from time to time. Let her know you're praying for her. Or if you need to give her a call, go ahead and call her there at home. You can do that. If you need her number, I'll give you her number. With that, but all those prayer requests are along that lines here. And again, continue to pray. Like I said, Pastor Carl, Miss Debbie, with them also. And a school for the teachers, students there also with that. Let's go ahead and look to the Lord now in prayer. Lord, I want to take time now to thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have. For us, just open your word tonight for a short time here. I hope, Lord, the words I have here be encouraging those who are listening, those who are listening later here. 
uh, to just uh, uh, give them a jump start for us here throughout the week to encourage them for to continue to live for you, to continue to be a, 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 a workmanship for us for you and uh, areas of life that we go from, from the, the, the work to the home to the friends that are around us, the neighborhood itself, that people see the difference in us and that difference is you for that you created us. I thank you those who are here tonight for serving from the heart of love for you, from Miss Kelly to Brother Chuck, Brother Ken, and Brother Howard. Also, I pray that we would help them for to continue. I thank you for their spirit of service they have for you. But also this long list we've had here and also in our church app we've seen and I've looked, I've looked across daily here for all the different names and mentioned from unspoken requests that Lord we give them to you. We have a great God who listens and understands in every need that we have. Lord, I, sometimes we don't know how to pray, but we continue to need to pray. Lord, that we need to continue to reach for us and to heaven to your ears here, the, the burdens upon our hearts, the heaviness that maybe some of us may have from upcoming surgery. I think my dear wife, once again, I lift her up to you. And I thank you for the spirit that she has already and for what you've done already. We see miracles there, what you've done with the, the surgery and the things that's happened to her. I think of Dr. Britt for all these many years that you continue to have your head and protection upon him and the opportunities that he continues to minister just uh, for the words he may say to a person and the stories he has talked to or just many examples of being in the church on Sunday morning here. Uh, continue to uplift them and strengthen them. Carol Heater also, Brother Tom Powell for uh, Kelly Georgi and her issues were there as otherwise. I pray, Lord, lift each one up to you. I, again, for the Brady family, of passing of Brother Mark for uh, a week and a half ago, be with the family as they maybe continue to take care of things there also. For the Panacetti family, I pray we were lifting Miss Denise up there at home or maybe she's going through some pain there. I pray, Lord, to give the, uh, the, uh, the family and give her the comfort that she needs to have of uh, comfort and pain there with those different things. And Lord, again, we are so thankful we have for the God that we come boldly to the throne of grace to pour out our heart. And as far as by doing that, we know this, that you love us so much that you have to give us the opportunity to come before you to pray and give our needs to you. Lord, we love you and thank you in this precious name. Amen. Real quick here, I, like I said, I'm going to do announcements at the end here. But last week I started for a, a subject here called What is Your Destiny? Of course, it's stated, a thing that's going to happen here in your lives. But I'd like to go back just before I start on something new here tonight. Again, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number uh, 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thy savings, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And then it says, He shall, for he shall direct thy past. Direct thy past. And I gave you a quote at the end there. Destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. It's not anything to be waited for, it's, it is a thing to be achieved. Our destiny or our fate here, we need to continue to move on. And that's one thing that God wants in our lives here as Christians to continue to work for Him, to move on Him. And I'm going to uh, kind of tie things in together for this next lesson I have here. But before so, I want to share this il illustration here about for us things that matter of chip. It's not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. Many years ago, Hank, Hank Aaron used to be my favorite baseball player. Number 44, played for Atlanta Braves back in the day. Home run king was noted before that. Uh, and there was there, there, home runs. But he had a game between uh, for the Braves and Yogi Bear, or this time I believe the New York Yankees at this time. Hank Aaron came to the plate here for ready to, for the pitch to come this way. And Yogi Bear, the, uh, the catcher there, starts saying this. Hank, you can't hit. Your mama can't hit. Your sons can't hit and starts rallying on for us, Hank Aaron. And next thing he says, Hank, they got your name spelled wrong on the back of your shirt. Hank Aaron didn't for us look to him at all, didn't say one word to him at all. He stayed focused on about for us that pitcher's gonna throw a 90 mile ball right at him or down the middle here, whatever it is. He stayed focused on what he needed to do. The next pitch, he threw it, the pitcher threw it down for us to the cross the plate. Hank Aaron for us hit the ball. Home run over the fence here. As he rounded the bases, he came right across here, touched home plate, and took about three steps away from home plate, turned and stopped and looked at Yogi Bear and said this, Yogi, I didn't come here to read. That was quite far as there, he came to hit the ball. The same thing in our own lives here, destiny of half for his destiny, which we have, 
and God, we have, a, we have to stay focused on Him. And we're living that life. We're going down that road there. All right, so moving on there. Psalms chapter 39, verse number 1 and 2 here. And really, my text verse uh, is uh, 13 to 14 here. But I want to share this with you. In Psalms 31, verse number 1, it says this, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. I read this uh, about three weeks ago for just my personal devotions here. And I read that verse, and boy, I couldn't get past, in a sense, that verse there, what that verse really means here to me. That we have a God that really knows us. You have people forward around you and say, I know you. I know Miss Kelly. You know, she has three kids. I mean, they're, they're so cute. They're so bumbled of joy. You know, they got a lot going on there. And so on. I mean, I know Brother Howard. But the one thing here, I really don't know Miss Kelly real like God knows her. And I'm, I'm just so thankful that God knows me. He knows me. And he searched as far as a search of me. And boy, I am glad that God can for look into me and for it really knows how I'm going today. In fact, that verse here, I'm a, I'm a baseball hat got kind of wearing guy. And uh, some of my hats have a white board on the bill there on the inside. I started writing verses on my inside of my hat. Many years ago for softball, I used to write a three by five card and put a verse in there. That didn't work too good, especially the sweaty, gushy, and not that. But I found that this works a little better here. So I have the word of God for wearing on my hat here for with that. And every once in a while I just take that hat off and look at it and say, boy, praise the Lord for his words of comfort and direction with that. But moving on here, Psalms, 19, oh, Psalms 139, verse number 13. And it says this, For thou hast possessed my range, range. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from, from thee, when I was made in secret and purity for it wrought in the lower parts of the earth. The lower parts of the earth. The Bible for us says there, I was one I forced fearfully and one free me. And my thought today for us here, the, the, uh, the thought I have for you today is this here. It talks about understanding that we're uniquely designed for God's will to do good works. That's my thought for you. Our destiny is tonight for us this way. The destiny is doing God's good works for us down the future here that I have. My destiny is doing God's good works. So my first thought is this. The first point is this. God has uniquely designed, has designed for you a destiny. God has uniquely designed for you a destiny. And boy, when I think about this here, that God has something to store for me, that he had made my pathway here. Many years ago, for us, I had an opportunity to lay some uh, pavers for somebody in the backyard. I am not a paver guy. I know, I have, all I know is trying to get a level. You put sand down there. You've got a level here. You pound different things. You interlock different things that on there. But that's about my knowledge is all about. That was about it. My, my I, I did not, for us, my occupation was not a paver person. But they wanted me to do this, and I did this. We just took some team to her. We did this job here. Got everything leveled in. Bet that thing looked so great. It was level, all that going on. But wait until the rain come. And the, uh, the, the month later, for us, bricks were here and there. Hey, my paving, my, for my pathway for them, it wasn't that great. But one thing I can say about this here, that God wants our pathway and has established a pathway for us to travel to do good works for him. And he's going to make that possible for us. It talks about that there. Not only that, but also a thought here for us, uh, how we're uniquely designed, each one of us here. I'm thank the Lord that I don't look like certain people in our church. There, no doubt. And if you could read my mind, you know which people I'm talking about. No. Yes, Brother Chuck, you'll be one of them. He's in the back here. And of course, there are guys who go on and go on and go on with different names and things like that. But we all are different. My land, you know, it's not like you go into a, a, a store here, like a Walmart, and lo and behold, you go over to shirt there, and they got small, medium, large, extra large, double X here, all the same color. Huh? We're not forced. 
uh, cast died afterwards here, the same thing here. We're not on the shelf. We're not, we're not a shelf kind of person here. As far as God sees in our lives here. We're not all, I'll put it this way, we're not off the shelf people. Christians. Why? Because you know what? We're all different. We're uniquely for designed for God's purpose here. We'll get into that later on. Where, I don't know about you, but hey, I know Miss Teresa Penichetti, she had to run all the way down to Dover today to get the fingerprint. I'll let you, I'll let you know. Her fingerprints and my fingerprints are totally different. Why? Because we're different. We're uniquely designed that way. I'm thankful that we're all that way. Why? Because God has something in store for us here on board with us to be used that way. My second point here, God created you as a masterpiece to do good works. Ephesians chapter 2, if you would please turn there if you have your Bibles there. If not, I'll read it to you nice and loud here the best way I can. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10 says this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before said ordained or destined that we should walk in them. Created for us to do good works. Not only that workmanship there we've been used for us and intertwined for us, masterpiece. A masterpiece. Uh, I know one thing for that and, and growing up here, and even as a young family back in the day when our kids, you know how it is, Miss Kelly probably has this here, when they had to go to school or go to Sunday school, the kids are downstairs and got these uh, crayons and, and they get the pictures going on and they get the collar there and you know try their best to go inside the lines and then they sign it the best way they can for spelling their name. Maybe it's the correct way they spell their name. Maybe it's not. But anyways, you know how adorable those fours, those masterpieces are that your kids have for you. And that's how unique that we are for us here. That God has designed us to do good works here. You know, that masterpiece in which those kids do, it might not have cost us a lot of money, but we know where it's come from. And the same thing for from God. God knows, hey, the good works that are going to come from makes it for us worth it that way. That God created us fearfully, marvelously for us here. He says, I'm wonderful here. Can you imagine God saying that? Hey, fearfully, God made you, Miss Kelly. But not only that, but also wonderful for us, he made you. Hey, when I was in the womb of my mother for us, he, he had already think, had things playing out for Jerry Factor in the future of my life, and the destiny of my life. What? To do what? Good works. To do good works. See, we're unique. It's like this. You know, how many, I, I don't know how old we is, the, the, the game, is, game system we. You know, for all this stuff here. But before you get on there, you have to choose your person. You got to make them up. I remember my kids, for did that for me. Yeah, they did it. They gave me the head. They gave me the hair on the side. They gave me the eyes. They gave me the frown and all that. Did it look like me? Not even close. But they got a joy out of it. Man, they were laughing. They are busting on me for it. All the different things along the lines here. Because they made it here and enjoyed that way. But I, don't understand, I want you to understand here that when God for us here says the masterpiece to do good works. I started out with that illustration for us, Hank Aaron. He didn't come to have a, a, a talking contest with Yogi Bear. He didn't have for us turn around or step out of the box and, and start talking to him that way. He came for one purpose. That one purpose was, what, was to do what? Is hit the ball over the fence. And see, we have to stay focused on forward our lives. Good works. And throughout the Bible, forward, it talks about forward, good, what good works in our lives should be in our lives. To be set apart that way. Later on, for same thing here. The Bible, in the Bible talks about for second to uh, Peter chapter 1, 2, and 4, that being set apart from this world here to do what? God's will in our lives. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people, no matter where you go in life today, who you talk to, people are watching people. Well, let me encourage you this here. One thing in society today, we need to be people watching. We have something called for us, watchmen in our ministry here, 
your head, you know, I say this, like in basketball, keep your head on a swivel, see what's around you from time to time here. You know, many years ago, I don't go to the mall much at all, but I used to go there just to watch people. Who, you know, what they're wearing, what they're not wearing, how, what their hairstyles are, what their, what this and that. I used to watch people for, see what the, all those different things here. But people are going to watch you for no matter where you go, whether it's walking in a Wawa and opening a door and holding a door open and so on. People are seeing that from you. It's amazing for nowadays. Many years ago when I used to open doors for people here and, and for they come through here and they, a lot of them just keep walking. Nowadays, they'll stop and say, hey, thank you. It's like almost a 99% of the time that I'm open, open, boards, open doors for people that they take time to turn and say something in that way. Thus, I do the same thing. When someone does that to me, I make sure, hey, you have a blessed day. I've said this before. There's a, when, I, when I came for you have a good day, to having a blessed day, that's a little different. A couple weeks ago, while, while, when I got my 32 ounce for his un, unsweet uh, iced coffee, vanilla, which I think it had still sugar in it, I get my 32 ounce bars there, I pay for my, 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 uh, my burrito, and when I finished there, I, I looked at the lady here, and she said, you have a good day? I said, you have a blessed day. And lo and behold, I took one step around for her, and she said, boy, I sure will. And that's what the reaction just came, what? By, the, what? by good words. Let alone good actions. Good actions or good works for people. See, we're destined that God for us created us here to do good works. But we are his workmanship. That masterpiece created in Christ Jesus unto God, unto good works. And then it says to gloss, then it says to walk there in them. He gives a command. Our destiny, hey, to be that masterpiece for God of good works. It's like this at times for that masterpiece that God has in us, and the people see us, or people watch us also. At times. Back in the day, you know, in college out there by myself, or is there, you know, got the white shirts going on, dress shirts here. Man. When I was growing up, I never ironed one thing in my life. Never. At all. Of course, back in the day, we were allowed to wear jeans to school, T-shirts. So, I mean, you really didn't need an iron back then. But boy, everything changed when I went to a Christian college there. And I had, I had to learn how to iron shirts. And one thing people before was there, no doubt when my wife at times where I didn't iron my shirt and my coat, my jacket gets here, and she sees the wrinkles, and she puts her head down and sees all oh, my stars. She looks at, you know, I, I learn now, I, I need to check my shirt out, and I will iron my shirt before I put my jacket on. Because I don't want to be an embarrassment to her. And the same thing in our own lives here, that sometimes we need that steam, we need that heat in our lives to take the wrinkles out of us, because we know this, that God's, God's people are being seen, and the good works that we have here, we need to represent him with good works. Our lives. I want to encourage you. Man, that's a Wednesday already. You got Thursday, Friday here, and you got Sunday coming. Man, you got two more days of work. If you work on Saturday, you got maybe three days more of work for us to, to, in a sense, to impress for us people that are around about you of your Heavenly Father, your God, to do good works for them. That's what He wants. Our destiny is to do good works for people to see in our lives. I'm not in a boasting way, not in a bragging way here. But I'm telling you, and to say it in society today, people are longing for that. Are you a good neighbor? I don't mean for it's commercial either. State Farm is here. Are you a good neighbor? Do your neighbors know who you are? Are you helpful with them? I have a for my neighbor across the street, Gary Flowers. I see him there's times that he was up in a tree the four uh, months ago. Ladder and all that. He's out there by himself. He got the tractor going on. His wife is on the, on the porch here. She's standing over the fingernails. She's chewing off here. I had an opportunity for us. Hey, they stopped. I went over to Gary. Hey, you need help, don't you? And of course, on top of the tree, he said, No, I don't need help. I said, Well, let me help you. He said, No, that's okay. You can go home. I said, Gary, let me help you here. I can hold the rope. He says, Nope. I said, Okay. 
I'm just trying to help you out. Um, and I said, I'm just trying to be a good neighbor. Oh, and of course he laughed up in the tree. Not too hard to even fall out of the tree. But anyways, but just look for ways to be good to people around right about you. Because I know one thing, there's a difference that can be made in people's lives by what you're doing for God. The third point I have for you here, moving on here quickly. God wants, to know, for God wants you to know your worth and live as his ma- a masterpiece. God wants to know your worth. You are worth it. I know there's times that we get alone and the devil can get with us here. Sometimes we're quiet. Sometimes we're too quiet. We allow things and circumstances around about us here to pull us down. But I'll let you know. In Psalm 139, it talks about for us. He says, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10, it talks about for us. We are his workmanship here. You know, one thing here, I will, and God says here, you have something worth giving back to me and living a life to do good works for me. God, for us here, God's masterpiece is always carried by the name of the creator. I thought about this back to the floor. Let me finish my thought there. That, that uh, picture your kids make for you, that you stick on the refrigerator for a year or two years. Or whatever it is. It takes a long time if you, for maybe some of you to keep them in a scrapbook or whatever book, whatever it is. It's, just, it's so dear to you. I remember many years ago, my mom was still alive. I, I believe I was still in college. At this time, I decided, I shared before, I decided to write a love letter to my mom. Mother's Day, and I decided just to write it. I loved her for it was there, and, and so on, and on, and on, and on. It was, uh, I didn't hear a response. Of course, that was before cell phones back in the day, and different things like that. Uh, phone calls, I really, I spent most of my phone and my money for it was there, calling my, uh, my wife-to-be at that time uh, on the phone. So I didn't really talk to my mom too often at times, but I just wanted her to send her a card, or send her a letter. I didn't really realize how much that letter really meant to her for, until about 15, 20 years afterwards. She pulled it out of her wallet or her purse, that, her purse and she, she said, here, this is the letter you sent to me way back when. And looking for as a date as a my star, she kept it that long. And of course, it was signed by her son, God's masterpiece. You know, see, God wants that from us. To be used in that way here to make an impact upon people that we're worth that much. Lo and behold, just a piece of paper and pen. Maybe for an hour of my time, but it's worth every cent there. And God's masterpiece for us carries on. Why? Through the name. So you understand here, the day you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, you got a stamp on you, you got a signature. And that signature says, God, his creation. And make the most of living for him. You're worth it. You realize how much you're worth? He sent the most precious thing on a cross for you. And that was his son. That's how much you should be worth. If that's how, you know, if just take time, sit back and realize, wow, that price for me. Absolutely. Sometimes we just need to sit back and think about for exactly what that is. And then our destiny is to continue or to do good works for God. So that's going to wind up for us here. Next week, I'll continue on for uh, lesson number three, or part number three here about what's your destiny. But let me continue to encourage you. Please, please live your life for the Lord. He's worth it. Also, for as uh, if you see the sign behind me, uh, I'll just say, when you when, went to Chick fil A at 10 27, you know what? I did do that one day. And yes, I got to eat breakfast and lunch. No better deal than that. Moving on, for as, boy, I don't think I was my baby picture. I had curly hair, but anyways, I'm God's masterpiece. Let's go over a couple of announcements with you also. Tonight for us here. Don't forget, because Sunday, Sunday coming up, fall back. Make sure you turn the clocks back. If not, you're going to be here early uh, with that. So uh, also with that, we have uh, Source Saints and shut-ins and gifts. 
if you can, for the list has been the same here. If you're watching for new here, they need from combs to tissue packets to socks to puzzle books, all those. If you can, bring a sack of those, put them in the back of for you there, and uh, Charlotte McGarry help to get those things needful there. And also, and of course, they need to be back by December 11th. Uh, and also, they'll, they'll need drivers that day to take some of these things to different places, different shut-ins here. And that's going to happen on December December 11th. The guests need to be back by December 6th. Okay, so we'll get that all straightened out. Hopefully by Sunday, I'll have it all done. Thanksgiving food basket. If you took a bag, please make sure you get that back in here by November 15th. November 15th. If you can, just bring up the foyer here, and we'll get somebody to take it downstairs in the team room. That's where they're getting all the bags along that line. I believe there's still a couple of bags back here to take. If you want to fill those up, also be much appreciated. If you have any questions, see Cindy Armstrong, and you can call the school office also on that. And also, don't forget, choir members! Choir practice on Sunday, right after the service here. So, hey, you have a blessed week, and the for us today, hey, it's Wednesday. Guess what? We're closer to Thursday. You know what Thursday's closer to? Friday, and then Saturday's coming. You all have a blessed week. For Hey, we love you here, and continue to pray for our church family. Continue to pray for our pastor and his dear wife. We love you here. Signing out, Brother Jerry.